I'm going to ask you which of these two cars is faster. I'm Jeffrey Schrank, and no, this isn't a consumer's guide to cars. It's a program about invisible persuaders. We make decisions based on clues, but we're not always aware which clues we use. Professional persuaders know marketers, salespeople, pollsters, politicians, merchandisers. And they use these invisible clues to influence your opinions and decisions. Now I'm going to give this car a test spin. I want you to judge its speed and acceleration from 0 to 40 miles an hour. This program is about detecting invisible clues and developing an early warning system, a sort of radar, to spot attempts to persuade and influence. They say never judge a book by its cover, but we do. In fact, not only do we judge books, we also judge cars, objects, and even people by their covers or packages. Now to illustrate, I'm going to ask you to compare the acceleration of this car with the first one. How a car looks is one invisible clue. Take color, for example. People expect a red car to be fast. Red sports cars sell far better than any other color. I'm telling you this so you won't be influenced by the fact that the first car was red. Now watch the acceleration of this car. I want you to decide which is faster. Research shows people who want a sporty car are more likely to buy one with an engine that has some growl in it. That throaty roar is a clue customers use to judge power, so engineers design it into the exhaust system. That sound is an invisible persuader. So which of these two cars is faster? In fact, they're identical. The only difference was the sound of the engines. We dubbed in a racier sounding engine for the second car. Did we influence your opinion? We find similar clues influence almost any purchase. For example, have you ever noticed that vacuum cleaners are fairly noisy? It's not because quieter motors don't exist. Marketers have learned that people believe quiet running vacuum cleaners are less powerful. Sound is a marker, a clue. Many consumers believe it has to be loud in order to be powerful. Much like the belief once commonly held that medicine has to taste bad in order to be effective. Now we also judge people by invisible clues, especially when forming first impressions. Research shows we believe attractive looking people are smarter, happier, and more successful than ordinary or homely looking people. You might say that's a stereotype, it's prejudice, unfair. You're right. But let me tell you about some classic experiments. Two groups of teenagers watched a videotape lecture. They were asked to rate the teacher. But the viewers did not know there were two versions of the same lecture. In one tape, the teacher looked her attractive self. But in the second, she was made up to look homely. Her hair was pulled back tightly, dark circles were smudged under her eyes, her face was pale, and facial shadows made her look hard. When asked to evaluate the lecture, those who saw the attractive teacher rated her presentation more interesting and enjoyable than those who saw the homely version. They even thought the attractive teacher tried harder, yet the teacher gave exactly the same lecture on both tapes. Imagine this situation. You walk into a phone booth and find a quarter on the shelf by the phone. You use it for your call. As you leave the booth, an attractive woman approaches and says, Excuse me, I think I left my quarter in here. Did you find it? What would you say? Now imagine the same situation, but a plainer looking woman. Excuse me, I think I left my quarter in this booth. Did you find it? Would your response be the same to both women? Experimenters staged this exact situation. They found 87% of the subjects, both men and women, returned the quarter to the attractive woman. But only 64% returned it to the plain looking woman. 
Lawyers know that juries are influenced by hidden clues. They know some clients simply look guilty, so they advise them on how to dress and talk. Studies show under some circumstances, defendants who don't fit the jury's stereotype of how a criminal should look stand a better chance of going free or receiving a light sentence. A package shapes our expectations about contents. In retail goods, a smaller competitor will often suggest by the color, shape, and design of the package that this product is as good as the market leader. Look-alike packaging is not a coincidence, it's a message. Position is another hidden persuader. You've no doubt seen ads for a store-wide sale. Well, believe it or not, many stores actually raise selected prices for a sale. Since shoppers believe a sale means low prices, they are more likely to buy on impulse. And since the merchandise is positioned as part of a sale, shoppers assume the price is a bargain. The purpose of many commercials is to position the product in the marketplace. Do you think ads like these mean the product is for young people who are active and attractive? Not really. They are aimed at people who want to be part of that young active group, and that includes plenty of older inactive wannabes. The product is positioned as a symbol of membership in this desirable group. The position in which a choice is presented can also influence a decision. Listen to this waiter. Well, let me tell you about a special drink from the health bar for today. It's called the Tropical Smoothie. It's a blend of mangoes, peaches, strawberries, with a touch of cranberry to give it just the right bite. And it's also blended with low-fat yogurt and crushed ice. It's really, really refreshing. Can I bring you one? Sure, sounds delicious. Okay, well the smoothie comes in three different sizes. First is the small, about the size of a wine glass. Uh, second is the medium, and our special on that today is you get to take home the decorative glass that's served in. Here's the key. And the third is the super colossal, and that's served in about a 40 gallon drum. <laughs> well, not quite. I don't think any one person could drink it. I'll have a medium. I get to keep the glass. And that's right. Hey, thanks. The customer is in for a surprise when she discovers that the special drink with the decorative glass will add $12.95 to the dinner bill. The three choices are intended to steer the diner to select the medium size. The small sounds too small, and the colossal is for dramatic effect. They are position decoys. They exist mainly to make the special offer easier to accept. This same tactic is used in merchandising everything from stereos to automobiles to snowblowers. Most electronics or appliance stores have a bare bones, ugly duckling model that they advertise at a very low price. But these no frill models are decoys presented to make higher price models the obvious selection. Size is another invisible persuader. Consider a stop at the concession stand at the local cinema. You see a colorful display of huge boxes of candy. Have you ever wondered why the boxes seem so much bigger in movie houses than in grocery stores? Here's a typical example. We could have picked any one of a dozen brands. These oversized containers are called theater packs. They're large in order to take up lots of space in the candy display, so they're more likely to catch your eye. In other words, the package is more a persuasion device than a containing device. Here's the same candy as sold in the supermarket. The package is much smaller, but it contains almost as much candy. To make package persuasion visible, you should always consider a package as much a persuader as a container. And yes, we judge people by the size of their package as well. Studies show that overweight people are less likely to be hired for a job and make less money when they are hired and are less likely to be promoted. One study estimated that businessmen sacrifice $1,000 in salary for every pound overweight. All this in spite of the fact that most research shows many obese people simply cannot eat less and become thin. Even a product as simple as glass cleaner has to look right. So manufacturers add color, blue in this case. Now blue is not the natural color of this glass cleaner. It's added to help define the product and to persuade shoppers of its value. The color of most consumer products is a marketing device carefully chosen to send the right message. 
If marketing experts see that consumers believe clear products are healthy or pure, they remove coloring agents and sell clear products ranging from shampoo to mouthwash to deodorant. The clearness is the message, a hidden persuader. The power to name is the power to control. The owner names the business, a parent names the child. Early explorers named countries and claimed them for the homeland. If you create a name that is recognized, you control how others view what you label. Take the countries of Greenland and Iceland, for example. You most likely picture Iceland as a huge iceberg, perhaps with a few towns on the edge. And Greenland you see as a country covered with trees, befitting its name. In reality, Iceland is a volcanic island filled with hot springs. Only 12% of Iceland is ice cover. But 85% of Greenland lies beneath an enormous ice cap. But the names of these two islands shape mental pictures worldwide. A survey asked people this question. How much do you think we spend on welfare? A. Too much money. B. Too little money. C. About the right amount. The results found that only 22% selected B. Too little money. But watch what happened when one word, the label welfare, was changed to assistance to the poor. The new survey looked like this. The results now, 61% selected B, too little money. That's three times as many people. The change in labels changed their opinion. For example, you might identify these historic films as our Defense Department at work. But when these were made, we had no Defense Department. The Defense Department was named in 1949. Before that, it was called the War Department. The name change influences how citizens view the military. It's easier to support national defense than a war department. Consider the label for this famous sandwich. Would McDonald's have sold so many millions of quarter pounders if they named it with equal mathematical precision but less persuasive skill, like this? After all, four ounces is a quarter pound. The quarter pounder helped increase the average price of a meal at McDonald's. It communicated the idea of more food, thus justifying its higher price. Brand names are labels that shape how we judge products. Researchers conduct experiments in which they ask unsuspecting consumers to compare products without brand names, colas for example. They find that people usually cannot identify their favorite brand once the label is removed. In one test, volunteers evaluated an unknown brand of adding machine and compared it to a well-known brand. Half the group judged the machines with no brand name showing on either machine. In this blind test, users judged the unknown brand as the superior machine. But the other half compared the same two machines with brand names showing. The second group found the machine with the well-known brand to be superior. In other words, the label blinded their judgment. That's why companies often spend more money to strengthen the image of their brand name than to improve the product itself. They know a strong brand name can be more valuable than a superior product. In another experiment, subjects viewed a film of a multiple car accident. After the film, Half the subjects were asked, Okay, about how fast were the cars going when they smashed into each other? The other half were asked, Okay, about how fast were the cars going when they hit each other? Subjects who were asked at what speed the cars smashed judged the cars as traveling much faster than people asked at what speed the cars hit. And a week after seeing the film, were more likely to state they saw broken glass at the accident scene even though none was shown in the film. This type of land was once called a swamp and most considered it little more than a breeding ground for mosquitoes. But environmentalists knew their value and transformed our opinion. Part of the image improvement was to replace the word swamp 
Today we speak almost with reverence of marshes and wetlands. Label creation is crucial to sales and marketing. Are there any new houses or apartments built that are not advertised as luxury? And slightly larger developments are not mere houses, they're estates, and their names often suggest the splendors of nature. Ironically, a real estate development is often named after a feature of the natural environment that is destroyed in its creation. In a few years, pine wood estates will grow down there. But those pine woods, they'll have to be cleared away before the luxury housing can be built. Words carefully chosen to persuade and influence are so common, they often go unnoticed. Words are windows through which we view the world, and sometimes the windows distort our vision. Some recent changes in everyday language represent attempts to take control of labels assigned by society. There is a difference between being a cripple and a person with a handicap, or between being a disabled employee or an employee with a disability. The label disabled or handicapped defines the person in terms of a single physical trait. Remember we said to name is to control. That's why minority groups achieve equality only when they can name themselves, when they select the label the majority uses. The term Indian is a label for Native Americans mistakenly conferred by Europeans in an error of geography. Would you like to be described by an old geography mistake? The word Negro is borrowed from Spanish. It was once a label of respect, but not one selected by people labeled as Negro. More recent labels such as Black, African American, or Person of Color represent attempts to control labels and change perceptions. Beware of labels that identify a person in terms of a problem or system. Many such labels end with the suffix IC. Although intended to describe, such labels often shape the persons and how society views them. Your persuasion radar should sound a warning in the presence of any label, especially when applied to people. Another often invisible clue that influences your decisions is repetition. Within limits, the more you hear or see something, the more you become comfortable with it. Now, I can tell you're skeptical. Let me tell you about some experiments. Psychologists showed subjects Turkish words like these and asked them to guess if each meant something good or something unpleasant. The subjects saw some of the words repeatedly, some occasionally, and others rarely. The results showed that the more the subject saw the word, the more they judged it as meaning something pleasant. In other words, familiarity bred acceptance. The more the word was repeated, the more acceptable it became. Repetition creates familiarity, and we like the familiar so much, we're willing to pay more for it. Now I'd like to suggest we often buy brand names because we recognize them. They're familiar because we've heard the names before. United Brands stamps the name Chiquita on a banana and sells the branded fruit at a premium price. Mushrooms with the familiar Campbell's brand name represent the safe and familiar. Unbranded, even if it's only a banana or a mushroom, represents the unknown. We are willing to pay more for bananas, jeans, or shoes branded with a name that has become comfortable through repetition. This raises an interesting question about pop music and hit records. Are hit songs on top 40 radio stations popular because they're repeated? Or are they repeated because they're popular? Our persuasion radar suggests some of the popularity comes from repetition. It also explains why the same song heard a year or more later so often sounds merely ordinary. Of course, we don't like everything that's repeated. But repetition is an invisible persuader that often escapes our detection. Understanding repetition helps explain cycles in fashion. A fashion five to ten years before its time is often considered shameless or indecent. A year before its time, it becomes merely daring or shocking. Then it becomes in or hot. A year or so later, it becomes dated or out. Sometimes it reappears years later to become quaint or nostalgic. But that first change 
from shameless to hot, is a matter of repetition. At first sight we say, that's absurd, but trendsetters resist ridicule, and the more we see the fashion, the more familiar it becomes. Just like those Turkish words, with repetition comes an easy acceptance. I've told you about three categories of invisible persuaders, the package, the name or label, and the act of repetition. There are countless more, but my purpose here is to alert you to their existence. You need to develop an early warning system that alerts you to attempts to persuade, to twist your mind even slightly.